in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed the walk of a believer how that you ought to live in this system on account of what you have become in Christ hallelujah and so here we are the Bible teaches us that we have been taken from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son that we have been lifted hallelujah are you following me now and then the Bible tells us how we ought to walk as Christians this is where the place of character development, the place of living out the fullness of Christ, the Christ life, the gift, the, 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 the fruit of the spirit, and so on and so forth. So this is all covered there. Tells you how that you need to walk circumspectly. Tells you how that you need to show a portrait of a true Christian. And let me tell you something, no matter how anointed you are, if you lack character, you will not last in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? The anointing of the spirit takes you high up there, but it is character that retains you. Praise the Lord. And so I will not be talking so much about that since it has been covered. Hallelujah. Chapter 6 from verse 10. We'll take it from there today. Just put your finger there and then let's go to Hebrews 2 just to establish... I'll be very brief tonight because we need to pray for our final year students. Hebrews 2. If you're there, say amen. amen. All right, let me start from verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things, to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep hallelujah the bible is saying give earnest heed to these things why because they are capable of sleeping verse 2 for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward verse 3 how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. But for God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Verse 5, this is where I want you to concentrate now. For unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come, of which we speak listen to me the bible says god did not give any angel authority over his works and i hope you realize that satan listen to me please follow me tonight i hope you realize that satan was one of the fallen angels so the bible says no angel whether fallen or still faithful was ever at any time by god given authority this is the first revelation to the fact that satan is an illegal occupant in the earth number one number two satan possesses no legitimate authority over the believer the bible says to none of the angels did god ever say i have put all this in subjection remember genesis 1 26 and elohim said let us make man in our own image and let them have what dominion over the fish of the sea the birds of the air everything that creepeth and so he said for unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come hallelujah let's read on but one in a certain place this is speaking of psalm 8 david now one in a certain place testified saying what is man that thou art mindful of him this was the revelation that was given to the psalmist 
or the son of man that thou visitest him this is talking about listen it says verse verse 7 can we read together just look at the projector one to read thou hast made him a little lower than the angels stop the word angel there was an error in the translation it's not the word angels it's the word god the word elohim thou hast made him a little lower than elohim all right thou crownest him with glory and honor and this set him over what the works of your hands this is talking about man the next verse please thou hast put how many things how many things thou has put all things in subjection under his feet he said for in that he put all in subjection under his feet he left how many things he left how many things you must get this revelation tonight he left nothing that is not put under him hold on now this is paul is giving us a revelation here he's saying that the lord when he created man are you following me now that to none of the angels did he give authority so according to god's organogram after the father the son and the holy spirit the next in the spiritual hierarchy is who man and then the angels are you listening to me now and then after angels we have spirit beings because everything in the realm of the spirit is more superior to anything in this realm and then it ends with the world of unbelievers and the bible says to none but to man this man adam Adam is not the name of Adam. Adam means man that was created. To this class of man that he created, he put how many things? All things. Let me tell you what all things mean. From the second heavens, there are three heavens. The Bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. Hallelujah. The first heaven talks of your atmosphere. The second heaven talks of the realm of the spirit. Are you following me now? The Bible talks of spiritual wickedness that operate in heavenly places. The second heavens. And then the third heaven, and the Bible calls it the heaven of heavens, is where the throne of God is. It's a heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool. So the Bible tells us that from the second heavens right unto hell, are you listening to me? Authority was given unto man. So Joshua can stand and look at the sun and say, thou son, stand still. Are you listening to me? Moses can look at the waters and tell it to divide. It says, can, can we have that again, please? I want you to have a revelation. It says, for thou hast put all things, inanimate and, and animate things, all things under his feet. And so the height, the apex of God's creation is man. Are you listening to me? Are you following me now? all things this is the reason why man has the ability to tame an elephant this is the ability why man can build bridges inside water are you following me now this is why man can build the ability to conquer matter the ability to conquer nature he says he put all things in subjection to man hallelujah that's the reason why the tsunamis and all the natural disasters are an aberration because there are voices that are speaking that what the Lord has said over man is not valid. Are you listening to me? He has put all things in subjection under his feet. He says for in that he put all things under his feet, he left nothing. He left nothing. That means as a Christian, you are absolutely in control of your circumstances and environments. Are you listening to me? Now, when you did not know Christ, everything was allowed to happen. We came from different families. Are you following me now? With all kinds of things. But when you come into this new life, this is what Paul is trying to explain to us. That as far as God is concerned, he has brought you to an experiential position where all things ought to be under your feet all things all things prosperity health blessings advancement all things but there is a mystery let's continue can we finish up that verse from but one to read come on let's read together one to read okay hold on hold on 
What is Paul saying? Why is Paul trying to confuse us here? Paul is telling us that all things have already. Are you listening to me? The word H-A-S-T is past tense. Am I correct English students? Meaning it has already happened as far as God is concerned. But Paul is saying from our perspective. He never said but God does not see. He said but we. But we. Now we do not see all things yet under him. So what is the problem? Paul is showing us that there is a problem here. God put creation under man. Yet when you look around, you do not see man walking in this dominion. He said we do not yet see all things. Next verse. Hallelujah. But we see Jesus. But we see Jesus. Who was made a little lower than angels. Now, a prototype. The Bible says man was made a little lower than who? Elohim. Now he now says we also see Jesus. Just like man, a portrait, a foreshadow of what he's designing for man. A little lower than angels. Not because the word angels there is the word Elohim. Are you following me now? Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Remember, the Bible says, Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who although being in equality with God, did not consider it a thing to be grasped, but he what? Lowered himself. This is what Paul is explaining here. Alright? So you can note there and write Ephesians I mean, uh, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 to 11. It says, for the suffering of death. He said, now he is crowned with what? Glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death. The word death there is not just cessation from living. Are you following me now? The word death there is the same word that is used darkness. It's the same word that is used chaos. Are you following me now? He's saying for the suffering of death. So you can replace it. That he by the grace of God should taste sickness, should taste poverty, should taste delay. Are you following me now? Once for every man. So that on account, when did he do this? His substitutionary sacrifice. Are you following me now? Where he became a substitution for man. So everything he went through for man in redemption, we were in him by covenant, fulfilling the legal claims of justice. Do you understand? And so it says... For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many what? Sons into what? Glory. Hold on. The Bible says the purpose of his death and all that he has done was to translate many sons. Before Jesus Christ died, he was the only son. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son but when he died and rose again he stopped becoming the only son he became the firstborn among many brethren because he sowed himself to the earth as a seed and the bible says except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it's a spiritual principle of multiplicity now when he rose he called you sam and said i died to bring you to call many sons into glory hallelujah are you following me now so you can connect this now with first peter chapter 1 verse 3 it says according as his divine power hath given us how many things you now see it all things that pertains unto what am i connecting something for you it says according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness there is a bot there now it says through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. Verse 4 says, Wherefore has he given us these exceedingly great and precious promises, that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. So, the purpose of Jesus' death, it's not just to come and take us to heaven alone. No. If that was it, you would have just flown to heaven the moment you died. Are you listening to me? There is a glory that he had. Man had this glory and it was lost. So Jesus went and paid the price. Listen to me. Because the eternal counsel of God, listening to me, Listen to me. As far as our church age is concerned, the eternal counsel of God is that all things, Colossians 1, Ephesians 1, the eternal counsel of God is that all things be headed up in the Christ. That he truly becomes the head of the church, the body. Are you listening to me? And so the way this will happen is that Christ, Jesus, will submit to the authority of the Father. 
Are you listening to me? And by the agency of the spirit, the church, the body of Christ will come under subjection to Christ. And by authority, we will enforce his dominion until cosmos comes under authority of man. At that point, Christ becomes king of kings and lord of lords. Then an end will come to our age. We will begin another age. Are you following me now? And so, his goal was to bring many sons into glory. What is glory? It's from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. It means the, the presence, the true nature, the character, the fullness of all that a man is and all that he represents. So when the Bible says that he is bringing many sons into glory, many sons into his character of, of love, his character of grace, his character of power, his character of prosperity, his character of divine health, his character of wisdom, his character of leadership. Hallelujah. So when you give your life to Christ, it's not just for you to be born again and say, okay, well, yeah. You need to realize that there was an intention in the heart of the Father. When he came to save you, the day Femi came to give his life to Christ and you stood here, listen to me. While the Holy Ghost was convicting you, there was an intention. Your coming out to get born again was only a means to an end, not the end in itself. Are you listening to me? That's why when you get born again, it's only... The beginning of your journey, not the end. And so you begin an experiential walk through the ministry of the word and the spirit. He begins to train you. Listen, can I tell you something? The ultimate purpose of God is to bring you into that realm of glory. So he starts teaching you how he behaves. He tells you now in the kingdom, speak like me. You see the basics, talk like me. He's teaching you. Talk like me, speak like me, walk like me. Soon you find out, Lord, I'm becoming like you. He says, that's the goal. I just started giving you beats. Talk like me, speak like me. Suddenly you talk and you see that things begin to change. Learn to love like me. Learn to give like me. The moment you begin to obey these little instructions, the ultimate goal is not just to make you a talkative, it's to make you become a replica of his glory. Are you listening to me? bringing many sons into glory now but watch this this is god's original intention and if satan is an enemy of of the lord and the enemy of the church what do you think his agenda is then to be able to stop are you listening to me to try to stop the reality of the believer coming into this position where you know and understand are you listening to me that God's desire for you is to rise to that position of glory. He said, know ye not that ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. Psalms 82 from verse 5, he said, they know not, neither do they understand. They grope in darkness and so the earth is out of course. He said, have I not said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the most high. He said, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. Say, I'm not ordinary. Say it, I'm not ordinary. You see, the problem is, many of you just say it because you are doing it in church. Are you listening to me? This is not about bragging. This is not about pride. This is the position that God has brought you by grace. And so you have authority over sickness. You have authority over everything. Are you listening to me? You have authority over the atmosphere. You have authority when you go to your families. You are not an ordinary person. So you cannot, it doesn't matter what your village is and where you come from. You realize that you have been separated. And now the Bible says when we were without Christ, separated from the commonwealth of Israel. But by grace he has called us out of every tribe. When you get born again, it's not the issue of where you are coming from. It's your new life in Christ. Hallelujah. In bringing many sons into glory. But we do not yet see all things. Why? Because there is a devil out there 
who will never watch you step into that reality are you following me now and this is the foundation of our teaching Ephesians Lord grant us insight tonight the goal of this meeting is not just to make you spiritually educated it's to make you powerful if the church does not walk in dominion there is trouble in our generation mm. verse 12 Ephesians 6 verse 12 are you there say amen all right for we wrestle not against the word wrestle there is the word contend for we contend not against flesh and blood look up please in other words please follow me we are going to be i will be touching and be balancing many things about the concept of warfare deliverance satan are you listening to me very quickly watch this because i, I will need to balance a lot of teachings that many of us have received that have misguided us and have stopped us from coming into the place of kingdom authority now in the bible we have established the fact that god's desire is that many sons be, be born into what glory is that correct do you believe that to raise you to a position where you live and reign and legislate on behalf of heaven on the earth and now the bible tells us we contend not that means there are adversaries are you listening to me there are all kinds of resistances coming from Satan. Watch this. I hope you realize that there is a law in this earth realm that whatever does not have a body cannot function in this realm. Is that correct? This is why the Bible says the church is called what? The body of Christ. The church is the body that the Godhead uses. So if God wants to heal, he finds a body that can cooperate with him and be his hands here on the earth are you listening to me now satan does not have a physical body demons do not have physical bodies are you listening to me so it makes it impossible for them to freely flow in our midst so they search for human agents the bible says we wrestle not against what that means the issue is not your grandmother in your village are you listening to me all these kind of deliverance things that people come now god is there is a deliverance going on now this is the real deliverance happening now are you listening to me he sent forth his word and his word he led them and delivered them because there are many of us right now who have been misguided you are sleeping in the night suddenly you see your mother or your father appear to you and then you go to one false prophet like the guy who prophesied to that lady that she was going to die that's a false prophet let me tell you something a true prophet does not just reveal catastrophe he stops it if he's truly a prophet there is authority to stop it all these prophets that only reveal problem there's something stop it if you are not you are not an ambassador go and sit down are you listening to me so now you come and meet me sam comes to meet me and says things are not working and then the man is praying watch this this is a lot of them have not come into a place of maturity while you are praying then i see sam's grandmother doing incantations the next thing i say ah sam your grandmother and then i say to your grandmother and you and i say sam what am i seeing i'm even seeing your sister it may not be a lie even if they are witches and wizards the bible says what we wrestle not against what that means it is vain it's vain just to look at this person and say grandmother just die don't you know that spirits don't die they will move from one place and look for another entity your problem has not been solved are you following me now there's all kinds of bitterness and anger in the body of Christ because everybody is blaming everybody. Hallelujah. Everybody is calling everybody a witch and a wizard and whatever. No, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. There are three levels of Satan's manifestations in the life of people. One is called possession, acute possession. That one is in control of your spirit. You are aware. That's the realm of witches and wizards and all of this. The second one is called influence, manipulation and control. That one, is, you are not possessed. But because of your mind, the Bible says, the weapons of our warfare are what? Are not carnal, 
but mighty through God. Are you listening to me? To the pulling down of what? Stronghold. They are in the realm of the mind. He said, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. He said, bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. So demons can manipulate people. Demons can manipulate preachers. Demons can manipulate tongue-talking believers. Are you listening to me? When you are born again, it's true that you cannot be possessed. But you can be manipulated greatly. Error is a type of demonic manipulation. Hallelujah. So every time the concept of what we call spiritual warfare, right, please, right. I need to define spiritual warfare right now. Spiritual warfare is not in terms of the word war, dear, please listen. The word war, dear, look up, please look up. Because this is our idea of war. Are you listening to me? So you are a warrior. We even act it in many ministries. They say, now assume your position and then you assume. And now you imagine in your mind, Satan, are you ready? And then you move back. Give him one punch. Then he gives you another one. Then finally, after so much travail, they beat you like you entered a meat machine. Then you come out like more than a conqueror. No, no. That is error. Are you listening to me? That's why we began to teach. Listen, every time you approach the realm of darkness, you approach from the position of Christ's finished work. The Bible says all things have already been conquered. You are not trying to conquer Satan. You are trying to enforce the victory. Are you listening to me? That's what we call the fight of faith. It's not the fight of sight or the fight of senses. Let me tell you what the Bible defines as real spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is the operation of the word and the spirit together to establish the victory that Christ has wrought. Say amen. If you are finding it hard to say amen, this is a sign that this meeting is for you this night. Because many of us don't like it. Say, ah, ah, this thing. They give you an idea that you're a military man. Yes, you are. But listen, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not man-made. They are mighty through God. Hallelujah. Let's read on. Thank you, Jesus. Are you getting blessed tonight? Alright, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities. Against, against rulers of the darkness of this world. Then against spiritual wickedness. These ones do not reign in this earth realm. They operate from the realms of the second heavens. Remember in the book of Daniel, the Bible says when Daniel set himself to pray. I follow me now. When Gabriel was bringing in the prayer because he's the archangel in charge of service. The Bible says that spiritual wickedness across the territory of Persia, the prince of Persia intercepted. And because it's not in Gabriel's office to fight, it's the angels that fight. Hallelujah. The Bible says the angels confirm, they perform. The words of God's messengers. And so when, when, when you stand as a believer, the first understanding is that you are approaching Satan not in your strength as a representative. Many of us, listen, every time I stand to minister to the sick, every time I minister to devils, I don't stand as myself. I say, oh, man of God, you have an apostolic. Demons don't even know who is called an apostle. They only know Jesus. Are you listening to me? They can call you an apostle or a prophet or whatever. Demons don't know those things. All they know is Jesus and any ambassador that truly carries the badge of, his, of Jesus Christ. So rea you realize that you are high. You are seated up there. Every time you stand and look at Satan, don't be surprised. Now this is where I will balance it. Because many preachers have taught 
that every time challenges come or if you are truly manifesting faith listen to me if you are truly manifesting faith then when challenges come and the rest is it's a sign that you are backsliding that is another kind of error are you listening to me say amen, amen. thank you jesus So what is the warfare of a believer? How do you stand against the wiles of the enemy? Because that's what Ephesians is teaching us in verse 6. Verse 13. On account of the fact that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He said, wherefore, take unto you the whole what? The whole what? Now let me. You will tell me whether knife and bow and arrow and so on and so forth was mentioned. There are people with all kinds of revelations that we teach in church and we build up a crippled body that you may be able to what did he say fight you may be able to what what does it mean to withstand to resist to refuse the victory over something he says stand everybody says stand stand yes stand therefore having your loins girded about with what is showing you the weapons that you use to fight the good fight of faith. Number one is what? Truth. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall do what? Set you free. So every time there is bondage, what do you need? What do you need, please? Truth. Revelation. So every time there is bondage and you are praying in the spirit. And say, Lord, I sense bondage. In our family, there is bondage. What is the revelation you need? It's not the issue of killing your grandmother. You need light. You need light. The entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding unto the simple. It says, and having the breastplate of what? The breastplate of what? I had a man of God say it so beautiful. And I'm going to say it. He said, why did he say breastplate? Because that's the one that covers your heart. Remember, righteousness is the ability to stand before the Father's presence without a sense of inferiority and guilt. Every time righteousness shifts, you are vulnerable because Satan begins to use your past. Satan begins to use all kinds of things. Are you following me now? So Satan comes and tells you about the things you did yesterday and then you use truth. First, you stand and declare, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. It's not because of what I have done. It's what Christ has done. I am walking in the victory that Christ has given me. Mm. That's what the Bible calls a fight of faith. That's how believers are to stand. So Ephesians teaches us who we are in Christ. To know your identity. Then it tells you how to live and manifest the Christ-like character. No bribery. No corruption. No sleeping around. No malpractice. Say amen. Don't look at me. Then it teaches you how to stand. Shows you who you are in heaven. Teaches you how to operate in the earth. And then teaches you how to conquer the powers of hell. It says stand therefore. Having your loins girded about with truth. And having the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the gospel of what? The gospel of what? There is a gospel called the gospel of peace. One of the manifestations of the spirit of Satan is trouble. There are many of you that trouble is a byproduct of violating many laws of God. The gospel, the word peace there is not just calmness. Are you listening to me? The gospel of shalom. The word shalom there is the word prosperity. Hallelujah. There is trouble if you are poor, true or false. There is trouble if you are sick, true or false. He said there is a gospel. There is a gospel. It says, let your feet, what do you do with your feet? You walk. That means let this perpetually be your mindset. Walk with this. With the gospel that God wants to prosper you. With the gospel that God wants you to live in health. Are you following me now? With the gospel of shalom. Not just peace and quietness. Above all, taking the what? Shield of faith. The shield of faith. Wherewith you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Taking the shield of faith. Now watch this. 
The shield, what do you do with a shield? You stop attacks. Are you listening to me? Faith comes by what? But the manifestation of faith does not come by hearing. It comes by speaking. Faith enters you when you hear. But is released from you when you speak. Are you listening to me? And so, you, you hear the word. Not newspapers, not chase magazines. Faith comes when you hear the word. So as I'm listening to tapes, as I'm building myself, as I'm studying Christian books, I'm hearing the voice of the spirit through those pages and my faith is built and what happens? I hold a shield of faith. So when Satan looks at you, when you go to your CGPA and you see all kinds of carryover, Satan says, that is it. No, you lift the shield of faith quickly. I am what the Bible says I am. I am full of the word. They send you a report from home. They say, guess what? Something is happening. The landlord is coming to kick people. Take on the shield of faith. This is what the Bible calls the warfare of the believer. Not to say the last money that came, wear it. Mm -mm. Take the shield of faith. I refuse to be offended. Your friend is calling you something. You take the shield of faith. And the helmet of what? The helmet of what? Of salvation. Where are we? The helmet of salvation. Look up, please. Why did he call it a helmet? Why did he say the hand gloves of salvation? Why did he call it the helmet of salvation? Because you cover your head. Salvation is the foundation on which everything starts. This one is salvation as being born again. Are you listening to me? That's what the Bible calls assurance of salvation. There are many of us who are saved, but you are not sure if you are saved. This is why we took our time to teach you a lot of things. Many of you are truly saved. But when you go to certain evangelistic meetings, by the time they finish, you, you now say, to, am I saved or not? You say, just go out if you are not sure. Please don't, don't disturb me. There are many of you, every altar call, every single altar call to be born again, you are coming out. Now, I'm not, I'm, there's nothing wrong. If it's an altar call to pray in partition and all of this, but if it's an altar call to give your life to Christ, can I surprise you? There is only one sin an unbeliever has. That's the sin of not confessing Jesus as Lord. Hmm. An unbeliever has only one sin. It doesn't matter what he has done. He is lost anyway. The only sin that takes an unbeliever to hell is not confessing Jesus as Lord. All right, let's, let's talk of something else. Are you listening to me? The helmet of salvation. And what? The sword. Come on. The sword of the spirit. Which is what? Which is what? The word of God. The sword of the spirit. So every time Satan brings his fiery dart, what do you use? Let's look at the life of Jesus, our high priest and our pattern man. The Bible makes us to understand that Satan comes to meet him after fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Watch this. Every time Satan comes to a man, Satan comes to meet Sam and says, Sam, did God really say you are the HOD of worship team? Watch this. Satan will always try to to let you do sensual things to validate what God has already said. I mean, he just came out of the waters and there was a voice. This is my beloved son. Am I right? Now Satan is telling him if you are really the son of God. That's why Satan will tell you if you are really beautiful, sleep with that guy. If you are really intelligent, you better do whatever you can do to get five points. Many of us are putting ourselves under needless pressure, trying to prove what the word of God already says we are. Are you listening to me? So he's told him, if you are truly the son of God, turn what? Stones into bread. Jesus would have said, all right, I will not only stone, turn stones into bread, you will see butter on it to let you know I'm the most high, not just the son of God. That's what many of us would have done. That's an easy thing, come on. Blue band, I call you from the leaves in the tree. But he said it's not necessary. It is. It is. It is. That's, see, this is how to fight Satan. No, he cannot stand it is written. Watch this. Do you know Satan even used it is written against Jesus? 
In the realm of the spirit is an interchange of words. The higher words prevail. So, demons, sit down. Witches and whatever. What do they use? They don't bring cane and flog you. They use, it is written. In their ordinance, the Bible says, blotting out every ordinance. It's something that was written. Even the judgment upon the kings, Psalms 149, is called the written judgment. The world is a legal place, friends. Are you listening to me? So he said it is written. And then Satan takes him. Watch this. And he tells him, he showed him the kingdoms of all this world. And said, if you bow to me, I will give you. Because until Jesus died, Satan was the legal holder of the keys. Where did he get it from? Adam. That's why Jesus didn't say, are you joking? It's my kingdom. He knew he could do it. And he said what? He refused. Satan takes him to a tower and says, can you just fall down? For it is written, he shall put his angels charge. Come on, Satan. Satan is studying the Bible. You are not studying it. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? So he comes and begins to attack you. He tries to find everywhere the Bible. Look at all the places you are to protect. The breastplate of righteousness. Helmet of salvation. The gospel of peace. Hallelujah. You are holding in your hands the sword of the spirit. And then on your arm there is a shield of faith. There's nothing to cover your back because you are not supposed to give up. You are not supposed to retreat. The prophecy has been made that you are a winner. So there was nothing designed to cover your back. The Bible says he who turn, if you turn in the day of battle, your strength is small. Hallelujah. Now, practicals. Satan begins to throw all kinds of fiery darts. Watch this, the operation of Satan. He begins to use the word of God. Sam, you will not be born again. You will not be this. Your salvation is not true. Suddenly, you begin to feel pains around your body. And truly, truly, physically speaking, there are pains. Suddenly, you go to your bank account. There is nothing there. You go to the board. What happened? The results are not doing well. Everything, you lay your hands to do everything and it's not working. And then Satan tells you now, using the evidences you see around you, can you truly say God is faithful? And then the, the man who has now become sense driven says, Lord, okay, but let's look at this thing critically. Now, that's where the Bible says, Abraham considered not. The moment Satan reduced you from a spiritual person to a scientist, you are in trouble. Because he begins to give you facts. He said, let's examine this critically. You just prayed the miracle service. You just had that the only money that your father had has disappeared. Watch this. Now, you know who you are in Christ. Meaning his victory is your victory. You already know the end by prophecy. He told his son Timothy, he said, war a good warfare with the prophecy. God gives you prophecy so that you can know what the end will be. Then by the manifestation of the principles of the kingdom, you begin to walk into that reality. Hallelujah. So I get up in the morning and I say, Satan, it doesn't matter what you are bringing. I believe what the Bible says. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm hearing reports while I look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Because the things that are unseen are permanent. The things that are seen are temporal. Hallelujah. Satan uses human agents. When they look at you and say you will not become anything in life, you say, though my beginning is small, my latter end shall fire. Yes, my village may not be in the map of Nigeria, but I know that the blood of Jesus was shed for me. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. I am precious. Sickness is hitting you down. If that same spirit, come on now, that raised Christ, you are sending words in the spirit. You are saying, I'm a good soldier. I'm not weak. The moment you speak, God tells the angels, are you not hearing? Have I not written that I am alert and active, watching over my word? Every time you speak, you put pressure on God to protect his integrity. So I refuse to be silent. I refuse to be silent. I refuse to be silent. And you begin to speak words of faith in the name of the Lord Jesus. That terminal disease over my father 
will not take him in the name of the Lord Jesus I believe I believe I believe he that must come unto God must believe it looks like you are stupid but when the result comes let me tell you something friends God is not joking with you many of you are already afraid now where will my school fees come from and Satan is telling you all right the proposal your uncle made for you are you ready to consider it? you say in the name of Jesus the Lord is my shepherd come on the sword of the spirit the Lord is my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd a non-believer comes to ask you out use the weapon of God's word what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness and what communion has light got to do with darkness there is a decision and you need to say no the Bible says the grace of God has appeared unto all men teaching us to say no there is grace let me tell you something it may take a while and this is where the Bible says follow them who through faith and patience one of the most frustrating things is that you are speaking God's word and pressing and results are not coming but you know what there are many of us that you get to that edge suddenly you give up there's a song that says i was right at the edge of a breakthrough but couldn't see it are you listening to me many of us when you are at the end of the road where your blessing the bible says, if the cloud be full of rain the man you call father abraham for 25 years god spoke when some people were celebrating the silver jubilee of their children, he was still waiting. He said, God told me. The man we call Noah, God told him rain will come. Let me tell you how long they built the ark. 100 years. How long have you waited on God? That you are yelling at him and you, 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 you will not. Many of us are talking, but what we are speaking, we are sowing demonic terrible seeds. Are you listening to me so every time i pray i take the word of god i say lord i know you are faithful in the name of jesus i know you are faithful you may be crying there's nothing wrong still cry but say lord my tears will not stop me from speaking you're sleeping and you're tired and you're weary you want to pray you say there's no result i've been praying there's no marriage can you stand ah isaiah 34 seek out of the book of the lord and read none of these words shall fail none shall want her made lord i thank you you designed me for a man somewhere and i thank you you are called the father of spirits rather than warning god and saying lord i'm giving you the last chance i will backslide you will go to hell are you listening to me Say, I will stand. Say, I will stand. See, final year students, listen to what I'm saying very well. This message is important. Because many people graduate with all kinds of excitement. And then you meet a root shock in life. Suddenly you find out that it's not the way Nigerian film has told you. They just wrote three years later. They showed the guy with one big house and everything. And in your mind, because you fed yourself with all kinds of things, the Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience. I'm not saying God cannot bless people. But I'm saying believers must be taught that patience is an aspect of faith. Because when God wants to give you 20 million next week, Satan will say, take 2 million now. And that's how many people out of all this get rich rubbish many people have gotten themselves they've pierced themselves with sorrow the things of god may be gradual but it's sure we have a sure word are you following me now whatever god cannot give me i cannot get it whatever god cannot give me i don't even want it because it is only the blessing of the lord that make it rich and added no sorrow every other blessing comes with a measure of sorrow anything that will take me to hell i don't want it are you listening to me so you must learn to stand every time you are praying it's not the issue of people to say lord i know that if you kill if you kill my 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 sister the moment you kill my sister i know the door will open 
Lord, I squeeze our spirit, I put it in a bottle, I close it. All this kind of demonic prayer. Many of us even do prophetic things. Yes! You go to the houses of prophets. They say, bring the pictures of all the people. They put it in a bottle, close it, and shake different things. Smoke is coming out, and then you feel it's working. Because we walk, you see the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Satan walks by sight and not by faith. Hallelujah. So as a believer, you will pray. Every time when we tell to people about praying, praying, it's not just the issue of comfort. Are you listening to me? Every time you pray, you afford yourself the opportunity to send words into your future. You are prophesying. What you see in my life is not what I'm praying about today. It's the result of what I prayed about yesterday. Tomorrow you will see what I'm speaking today. Are you listening to me? There are many of you, you are speaking with your one sandals. The blessing of the Lord is upon my life. I will be a blessing to generations. And while you are saying it, you are drinking Gary with no sugar. Don't worry. Be happy because you will not have the opportunity to see that again. I saw one picture that we snapped when we were at the cafeteria. You remember? We sat down like prisoners, all of us. I was with my jacket. Jimmy was here. Jakes, all of us, we just sat down. We were laughing. But while we were laughing, we were speaking. Come on. This is the difference between you and the person in the class. You are listening to the same lecture, but you are not going to the same place. There is an ability. You are in your office. Everybody is receiving monthly salary, but there's an extra grace. You are tithing. You are giving. You are stopping the devourer. I'll never be a failure in life. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'll never be. I've found the keys. I've found the keys. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I believe the word of God. I'm not just preaching it. I believe. That's why when people are making a boast of what they have become, I can't join them because I know how I got there. Hallelujah. So you are not ordinary. You see, the goal of this thing, many of us feel very excited now. But every time, have you been speaking about the things that are troubling you? Don't allow Satan to just ride through your life. Don't use wrong words. No! Every time you use wrong words, you may feel psychologically comforted, but you have tortured yourself again. Thank God for not killing your enemies because you will be the first person to drop down and die. So I have the spirit of faith. I lift up the sword of the spirit. Hallelujah. You're on your job and somebody is frustrating you. None of your business with the person. Just pray and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Don't say, don't tell God what Satan is doing. Tell him what his word says he will do. Many of us go to pray and you spend hours telling God what Satan is doing. That's not what he said you should do. He said, as I hear you speak, it's not just speaking your words. Ezekiel 37 verse 7. I prophesied as I was commanded and then there was a sound. He says, oh bones, hear ye the word of who? The Lord. There's no other word that is valid in the realm of the spirit. Not even your own words. It is the words of God. Are you listening to me? I choose to believe God's word. See, this is a training. This is a training. You're on your job, you enter your office and you lay your hands in the name of Jesus. This is the day that who made? Who made? I do not read in my Bible that Satan helped God to make any day. This is the day that the Lord who happens to be my father has made. It didn't say has created. It said has made. Meaning it was designed. It was crafted. When God was making my day, he said, uh... How will Josh's life be tomorrow? It will be best for him to walk sick, free, blessed, prosperous. And then he created it. But Satan will step into that day and say, no, it will not be like that. And then he say, okay, to our Lord, you see what? You're... No, 
you stand and say, I, I have found it. My Bible is a mirror. My Bible is a door. My Bible is a picture. It lets me know what God has said. And I take that word, I put it in my spirit. And I'm not going to let any devil stop me. I will speak the word of God. As you take your time praying in the spirit, as you pray in the spirit, you are building capacity. You know why? So that your strength will not be small. That's why we pray in tongues. There are many of us, our strength is small. Every little challenge, you just fall back. Though he slay me, Job said, yet will I praise him. Are you listening to me? Final year students, many of you are already afraid. Calling all kinds of uncles and aunties. And saying, what of uh, uh, uncles sir? The other issue we spoke about when I was in 200 level. Oh, if God be for me. If God be for me. If my God be for me. If God be for me. If God be for me, I need not pledge allegiance to any man under the sun. If God be for me, if God, he said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes. Lift up your eyes for your school fees. Lift up your eyes for your job. The Bible says you will occupy houses you did not build. That's what my, you may not believe it, but I believe it. And I will walk in it. I walk in the favor of the Lord. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou Prepares a table before me, not in the absence, in the presence of my enemies. So as a final year student, you walk out and say, Hallelujah. A graduate is out with the anointing of the Holy Ghost, not just a certificate from ABU. I have an anointing. The Esther anointing is upon me. The favor anointing is upon me. Every door that is closed must open. I begin to speak. So you finish your exams, and while other people are popping beer. And behaving foolishly look at their lives after 10 years you will regret it you will know the consequences of not speaking you take one or two weeks back what are you doing you are just speaking I say no I need to build something the only thing that is permitted to enter your future they are words hallelujah if I were you I would take five days I will dedicate every day to speak on several aspects of my life. Today is finances. I will sit down and search through scriptures. Let me tell you something, friends. This thing works. Are you listening to me? It works. And I believe the word of the Lord. And you begin to speak. You begin to prophesy. You begin to declare. And you say, Lord, I have no man. Maybe your father is late. Maybe your mother is late. And everybody's running away from you. Cheer up. Cheer up. You are an ambassador. Say it. Say it again. If there is anything I want you to take out of Koinonia final year students, some of you, we may not see you again. Maybe forever. But I want you to know that while you were staying in Zaria, that a central message in your spirit that you are an ambassador I tell you, many of you, after many years, you will sleep and you will hear these messages. You will remember that there was somebody shouting at the top of his voice. Whenever life presses you down, suddenly you will hear it in your spirit. The Bible says you shall hear a voice. It is the voice of the Holy Ghost. You shall hear a voice. The voice of the Spirit. The voice of ambassadors. The voice of faithful men. You will hear these messages again. You are an ambassador. Arise, sons of glory. Arise, generals. Arise sons of glory when they say they are bribing in the office you say no no nevertheless the foundation of the lord standard show have been this seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let every man that named the name of christ depart you say no i'm not a corrupt nigerian you become a minister no way no way no corruption i hope you are not just jumping because some of the people who are doing what is spoiling this nation, they were in church. They had this message that I'm, I'm teaching to you. But they did not mix it with faith. I tell you, there is a generation rising. Are you hearing me? There is a generation rising. We are not the wasted generation. I see it. I see the breaking of a brand new day. I see the breaking of a brand new day. Steve, can you help me? 
I see the breaking of a brand new day. Listen, I will not organize dinner for you final year. It is, we are going to launch you here with an anointing. Are you listening to me? We will launch you with an anointing. That's why we told you tonight is your night. Listen, tonight is the night. I want you to open up your spirit. That's what we did for the final year students. That's what we always do. It's wonderful to organize dinner and dress and do this wonderful. But you have eaten enough. It's time to receive something. Hear me? Let me tell you, words have prophetic implication. It will follow you after decades in your life. Hallelujah. Isaac looked at his son Esau and blessed him. Did he give him money? What did he give him? And the Bible tells us that a few years later, Esau came with cattle. He came with servants. Where did he get them from? That's what will follow you. So that after five years, we see you coming with companies and ministries and corporations and children. The recession notwithstanding, none of your business with the recession. You are an ambassador. You belong to a class of royalty. I'm telling you this. When you graduate, people will laugh at you. They will tell you what I'm saying does not make sense. But the generation that will survive, the times that are coming, will be men of the word. If the word cannot do it, then we are hopeless. But thank God for the power of the word. It created the heavens and the earth. The Bible says through faith, we understand that the world, that my future, that my life, that my finances is framed by the word. Final year students, all of you, I want you to jump up gloriously. All final year students. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want to invite all final year students. I hope we can have this. Okay, not this side because of the elders. Please just dress here a little bit. All of you jump out here and come and line up quickly. Please do it quickly. Yahweh. Yahweh. marriage not fear of job how can you fail listen an unbeliever who is not praying he's not hearing any word is jumping and busting champagne and you a believer that is royalty i don't care how many people in your family have not become successes there is an anointing that will come upon you it will set you on high i tell you those of you out, can you pray in the spirit for one minute? 
Pray in the spirit. You have been taught. You know the power of prayer. Come on, pray. In the name of Jesus. Powerful. We are releasing you as an infant of fire. I tell you, you will change. You will shape history. You will shape history. I am confident. The word of God is strong in you. The word of God is strong in you. The word of God is strong in you. students listen to me hallelujah listen please listen I'm talking to you with all my heart you have had teachings on faith true or false true or false you have had teachings on the grace of God you have had teachings on the fear of the Lord you have had teachings on character the Bible says he gave unto some apostles prophets by the ministry of the servants of God for years some of you you have been built in the word of God. I assure you, that word will keep you. Are you listening to me? Look at me. Now you know success is not a mistake. True or false? Who is still trying to learn? Now you know that there is an operation of the word of God in you. Now you know that you don't just have a certificate. You have an anointing. That you are being raised up with Christ. This is not about man of God. This is not about woman of God. You will go and meet your colleagues who have spent their days in the university just reading and living for Satan. Refuse to mix up with them. You may be a fanatic, but I tell you, if you are ashamed of the word of God, you will be a failure in life. He said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Our fathers, the holy men of faith, kept this word. And they used it to change history. Are you listening to me? Great men received inventions from this word. Great men had model families from this word. We have taught you things about family life. We have taught you things about, about the principles of God. Relationship, money, kingdom economics. You have no excuse to fail in life. Through tears, we have labored in the word and in prayer for you. To build you let me tell you something i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to build you and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified keep the principles you have had some of you you may not see any results yet but i want to pray for you hallelujah i want to pray for you i want to pray that god will put a blessing upon your life listen listen it will take you from your village to shake the nations i tell you this and there is an anointing that can pick a man i have found my servant david and with my holy oil from the wilderness to saul's throne from the wilderness there is an anointing that took esther from her hamlet not known by anyone you may be lost in this crowd right now for some of you, you will be great apostles. For some of you, you will be men and women of God, bishops. Many of you will be the next Amphi McPhersons. Many of you will be the next business moguls. I'm not motivating you. But you must keep the word of God. Listen to me. Many graduates come out with excitement after six months. What they call faith six months earlier now becomes foolishness because of the reality of what is happening look at the mess and the nonsense that is going on in abuja when you preach to many people in abuja what i'm preaching to you some of you live there they'll just laugh and say forget jare leave all those your childishness let's face what reality tell them my bible says i am the truth and i am reality 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 is everything that is in the word of god you will not beg for food 
ladies no barrenness no that subject is gone forever i don't care what your past is that's why we are settling it here are you ready we are going to pray for you and bless you and pray that the grace of god will come upon you deuteronomy i first want to bless you with the blessings that the jews used to bless their people with thank you lord jesus Deuteronomy 28. I just want you to shout amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name that is above all names. Father, I pray that as I pronounce these blessings upon your sons and daughters, let the angels that signify these words, let the angels that make this happen, make it happen for them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the field. Blessed is the fruit of your body. And the fruit of your ground. And the fruit of your cattle. The increase of your cows. And the flocks of your sheep. Blessed is your basket. And your kneading trough. Blessed shall thou be when you come in. And blessed shall thou be when you go out. The Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They shall come out in one way, but they shall flee in seven ways. The Lord shall command a blessing upon your storehouse. You shall lend to nations. You will not borrow from anyone. I prophesy unto you, you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. I call your husbands, I call your wives, I call your children, I call your prosperity in the name of Jesus. Whatever limitation is upon your life, let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. Cultural limitation be broken in the name of Jesus. Territorial limitation. Be broken in the name of Jesus. False mindsets be broken in the name of Jesus. I command that you are prosperous in the name of Jesus. You will not beg on the streets of Nigeria. I forbid you. I command jobs to be waiting for you. I command ideas to come upon you. For those of you who are going into ministry, I pray that you will not mislead God's people in the name of Jesus. That apostles will come out of you. Prophets will come out of you. Evangelists will come out of you. Teachers of the world will come out of you. Pastors will come out of you in the name of Jesus. Ladies, I bless your womb. No barrenness. You will not give birth to abnormal children in the name of Jesus. hallelujah listen the guys i want to pray for you that spirit that comes upon men listen that makes them wild fathers that spirit that can come upon a young man who is well behaved right now but 10 years later he has become a source of terror to his wife and children let that spirit never come upon you in the name of jesus you will be model fathers i prophesy model fathers in the name of jesus sisters you'll be model mothers you will raise children after the fear of the lord in the name of jesus i prophesy to the earth job said as for the earth out of it comes bread as a servant of the living god i kneel down upon this earth i invoke the bread that is upon the earth i command it to come to your life i I kneel down, I invoke it in the name of Jesus. I command bread upon the earth. You will not beg for bread. You will not beg for bread. You will not beg for bread. Hallelujah. That spirit, listen, of untimely death, that a graduate comes to collect his certificate and as he's going back in the name of that is above all names 
I command by the anointing of the Holy Ghost every spirit of death upon your life be lifted forever in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every terminal disease, whether it's SS, whatever kind of things you inherited right now, it falls in this place in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I command that the Godfather himself, the one who can connect men, higher. The one who knows who is who in Abuja, in Lagos, in Jos, in Portacot, my father and my maker. I pray that God will connect you. I call for your destiny helpers. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost. For those of you look at me for those of you who are one leg in one leg out with god you are not strong in faith every little thing shakes you you cannot be a general that way i impart strength upon you no backsliding in the name of jesus no backsliding in the name of jesus no backsliding now i want to release something upon you listen to me Every time, listen, every ministry that God calls has certain anointings. Are you listening to me? Every ministry that God calls has certain anointings. When God called and established this ministry, there are certain graces. I have seen these graces in my life. The ministers have seen it in their life. I have preached about it many people laughed at me when i was saying it hallelujah there is a compelling power i call it anakazo my god i pray that you make your people believe this there is an anointing for wealth and prosperity hear me no this one will come with an impartation there is an anointing for faith god gave me the spirit of faith in the name that is above if I be a servant of God at the wind of the spirit right now let it blow 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 the gift of faith the presence of God Anakazo the compelling power it will compel in Nigeria it will compel in South Africa, in UK, everywhere. But take it, 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 Mabaka boko tostia. Prateke pode toposia. The favor anointing. The favor anointing that came upon Esther. The favor anointing in the name that I, the name of the Lord Jesus. I command right now. You need favor in Nigeria. You need favor in Nigeria. Lift your hands for now, yes, students. My Father and my God, let a mantle of favor receive it, receive it, receive it. Favor, I invoke it from the realm of the Spirit, from the realm of the Spirit. I separate you from evil. I separate you from accidents. I separate you from fire disaster. In the name of Jesus. I separate you from the activities of terrorists. 
in the name of Jesus. Thou shalt not fear. Go and prosper in business. Go and prosper in business. Go and prosper on your job. Go and prosper in ministry. Go and prosper in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is sending many of us. Listen, we have spoke about, we've spoken about kingdom advancement. Some of you are going into family life. Some of you into the media. Some of you into ministry. Some of you into education. Wherever you are, you are an ambassador. You are an ambassador. You represent the heavens. You represent the heavens. My God bless you. The God of Jacob bless you. The one who you honored while on campus, may he honor you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Go and be a light. Some of you will go outside this nation. I command doors of nations to be opened for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. For those of you who are still confused, listen, about your purpose and what God has called you to do. Between now and the next 14 days, I prophesy that by divine encounters, let there be supernatural clarity. In the name of Jesus. None of you will make mistakes in your life, not with your job or your ministry or marriage or any of such things. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Look at me. Say, I'm victorious. I'm victorious. Say, I know the word of God. I'm a champion. I'm a, champion. I'm a, winner. I'm a winner. Say, I'm born again. I'm born again. The spirit of life is in me. I am great. I will shake this nation. I will shake Africa with the light of God and with the power of God's word. Say in the name of Jesus, my words are prophetic. My words are creative. I call for blessings. I call for grace. I call for greatness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, whatsoever has not been planted by God is uprooted the favor of God is upon me is upon me give God a shout of praise now listen to me According to the measure of grace that has been given, we graduate you. Because, see, this is a prophetic statement. There are some of you that have issues that, humanly speaking, but according to the order of grace, the Bible says, Whosoever ministers, let him minister according to the measure of grace. According to the measure and the order of grace that God has given, I command. This night, this night, this night, in the presence of God who is able to do all things and his holy angels who are mighty, we graduate you from Amadou Bello University. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Hear me, hear me. By this statement, I command courses to be waived. Let missing scripts be found. Let policies change. In the name of Jesus. For the papers you have written. That you know except God helps you. There is a name the Holy Ghost is called. The helper. My father. Let your spirit help the sons of the kingdom. Receive the help of the Lord. And for the remaining papers you have to write. Look at me. And Samson said, Oh Lord, let my hair grow this one time. And let me push. The Bible says he pushed. There are some CGPS right now. I command that class rise to 2-2. Two, two. I command 2-2 two, two, rise to 2-1. I command 2-1 two, 
rise to first class in the name of Jesus. In your final exam, let there be a harvest of five points. Let there be a harvest of five points. Let there be a harvest of five points. A harvest of five points. I pray for your project. Every supervisor, as long as he's under heaven, if the cloud is above him, every supervisor that will not let you go, I will not work on your project. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, I command him to let you go in the name of Jesus. And every lecturer that vows that he must sleep with you before you pass, let the Lord compel him to mark your project and let you go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I prophesy unto you. I pray. There are many of you, you have not even started your project. You have no idea whatsoever. But there is a spirit in man and the inspiration, the unction, the anointing, the bread, the audacity, the capacity of the spirit. Make it them of understanding. I program your spirit to succeed, to understand in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every sickness that we want to stop you in the name of Jesus. Some of you need finances for your project. That's what is stopping you. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. From whence cometh my help? I command right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The ravens came and fed Elijah. I command men who will serve as the ravens that will come to feed you receive supply receive supply in the name of jesus say i'm above say i'm above in the name of jesus i like you to turn around and hug 10 people and tell them congratulations it's great to be a graduate now go back to your seat victoriously Go back to your seat victoriously. I see the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I see the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I see the favor of the Lord. The favor of the Lord is risen upon me. Arise. Upon me, I rise and shine. My light is gone. Oh, I see the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Give God a hand clap, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you are victorious. Are you listening to me? You are successful. You are. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise, I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall.